Hey, what's up YouTube? Today I'm going to quickly show you how to uh, remove and replace this radiator that comes on this 2003 Subaru Legacy. Uh, as you may know, these 2.5 liter engines, uh, they come in uh, a variety of Subaru made vehicles all the way as far as back as 97, I think, up to uh, 2006 or 7. Uh, don't quote me on that, but if you got a 2.5 liter and you need to replace your radiator, this procedure is going to be, uh, this video is for you. Okay, so... Uh, and you know actually this radiator doesn't seem to be connected to the condenser, to your AC condenser, so it's going to be really easy getting this out and I'm going to I'm going to try to remove it with as many of the belts and the fans connected to it as possible so it'll because it, it'll be a lot easier to swap swap those over to your new radiator when once this is out of the car, okay? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is remove this intake tube, okay? Okay, and this is held in place by these two 10 millimeter bolts. Now we just pull on this and it should come out, okay? Okay, so removing the radiator, you know, you can do this with the car on the ground, but as you can see, I've already got it supported on jack stands. You know, you can do it with the car on the ground if your car doesn't have, the, I don't know if there is any, uh, there's a shield underneath it or not. That would be a lot easier if it's not, this car didn't come with one. I don't know if it fell off somewhere or this is the way it is, but uh, yeah, you could do it with the car on the ground. It's uh, as long as you have the right tools and swivel lens and whatnot to to get uh to the to the clamps and stuff that are going to be underneath for your radiator hose and also transmission lines if you have an automatic it's you're going to have to disconnect some transmission lines down here uh, but if you just got a stick shift then you don't have to worry about that but uh what we're going to do next is actually uh drain the coolant from the radiator which we'll have to do by disconnecting the lower radiator hose Underneath, I'm going to disconnect it from the engine side and just drain the coolant. Make sure you have a big enough cash pan to get all the coolant that's going to be draining out of this. Okay, I know it's kind of dark in here, uh, but uh, what you basically need to do is just to undo this clamp. And then you will twist and pull on this. And once, if it starts leaking, just let it be. So that way you can somewhat drain this coolant under control. <laughs> but it looks like we're gonna have to pull it and just deal with the mess kinda here. There we go. Also don't forget to open up your radiator cap to help with uh, the flow of uh, the coolant getting out of your radiator, okay? Okay, so while our radiator is draining, we're just gonna go ahead and remove this uh, coolant reservoir. Just pull on this tube. And there's two 10 millimeter uh, bolts that are holding this to the radiator, so we're gonna go ahead and remove those next. You know, you can probably even get away with not removing this, but I'm, uh, you know, I need to get a good shot of <laughs> removing the transmission line, so that's why I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. But there's a chance that you can get away with not removing this coolant reservoir, okay? I right, just pull on this and it's out of the way. Okay, next we're going to come to the other side of the engine and remove this clamp for this uh, upper radiator hose and we're going to remove this from the engine side as well, okay? Okay, same thing with this, just twist and pull and it should come out without a problem, okay? There we go. We get this uh, rubber power steering hose that's in this bracket that's attached to the radiator, radiator out of the way. Okay, so what we'll need to do next is to remove these transmission lines. Uh, now, this is only for an automatic, manuals don't have these. Uh, but the other thing is on this car, these uh, clamps, they're facing down. Uh, but even then, you can still remove them from the top, but these are rusted uh, and they're pretty bad and I need to cut them actually. So, I'm going to have to use my Dremel tool to cut these clamps. There's two, de two of these hoses. Make sure uh, if you are unsure where they go, you mark one and keep them until know where that goes so you put the, one of them where it is and obviously the other one will go to the other one okay so I'm just gonna cut one of these uh, uh, cut, cut these clamps and remove these hoses okay okay you can obviously use die cutters or whatever cutters you have handy to cut these uh, I'm gonna just use my Dremel tool because that's what I have handy but uh, you know using my Dremel tool you gotta be really careful not to damage the actual line the metal line just to get it exactly on these clamps and on the clamps only, but you're still gonna damage these uh, rubber hoses. But uh, what I'm gonna do before I put this back on is actually cut this rubber hose from here and uh, just uh, push it up. There's enough slack in these uh, hoses to allow for that, okay? There we 
There we go, there's one clamp. Just, just loosen it up with the pliers. Now we should be able to pull this out. There we go. And you probably want to have a catch pan underneath because uh, transmission fluid is going to come uh, rushing out of that. It's going to start leaking. If you're using a Dremel tool, it's going to require steady hands and patience. Alright, so I actually recommend you use a different tool, but this is what works for me. Ice cream truck. Alright, pretty much same deal with this with this line. Okay, just twist it, loosen it up, and pull it out. And again, I like to reiterate that the way I went about removing these uh, rusty clamps with my Dremel tool is not the best way to do it. The best way is to get a pair of cutters in there. I just don't have a pair that's that fits in here right now. And I've been I've, I'm used to using my Dremel tool. If you're not, it's uh, you know you could damage these uh, the metal pipes here, and then you will have to go chase one of these metal pipes down and replace it. So be very very careful if you're using the Dremel tool. Okay. Okay. Next, we remove these two bolts that hold these uh, two clamps that secure your radiator in place. Okay, and these are going to require a 12 millimeter uh, socket or wrench. There's one. And here's the second one. Okay, so what you want to do next is I get underneath the car. You can actually still do this from the from the top of the from the top, but uh, you, what you'll need to is uh, to do is to disconnect your uh, connectors for your uh, for your radiator fans, and you do that by pressing up on this tab and then just pulling it out. Okay, there's one. Okay, and here's the connector for the other fan. So same 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 procedure. There we go. Okay, now if all has gone according to plan, we should be able to just lift this radiator with all the radiator fans attached, okay? This uh, power steering hose might be a little in the way, but it shouldn't be a problem. We should be able to get this out. It might take a little bit of convincing, but it shouldn't be a problem. And have your catch pans ready, because you're still going to have leaks and whatnot. Okay, and there it is in, in all its glory with all the fans and the hoses attached. Uh, now, this becomes a really simple job of, you know, you just get your new radiator on the side and just sw start swapping things over. Just make sure when you put these back on, uh, the screws for the clamps are facing up or they're accessible from top of the engine just in case someone needs to do them later because uh, and it also could be you if this is your car. You might be, you might have to do this again at some point. And uh, these are the hoses that I, uh, I'll probably replace, you know, or and actually they're in good shape and they rarely leak. So I might just actually just, here's the cut to it. Um, so I might just, just cut them, just make them a little shorter and then just stick them back on the pipe for the transmission lines. And uh, you're obviously gonna need new clamps use get these kinds of clamps because these are better clamps that just last longer in my opinion and uh, even if they rust they, they still come loose unlike the other one uh, and the, this hose actually looks new so someone's been here before and uh, yeah these are aftermarket clamps uh, so yeah and now now this job becomes real simple just just swap over everything swap over your radiator fans your hoses and uh, just remember when you go to put this back on the bottom of this radiator has uh, these things that need to get uh, pop into place they're gonna be rubber grommets at the bottom here there's one there and there's one on the other side so they need to go exactly in those and then uh, make sure these wires are out of the way you don't damage these wires as you're putting your in your new radiator and uh, connect those back up and Get coolant in there, uh, bleed the system. Uh, it's very important you bleed the system properly. That way you won't overheat and uh, you know you uh, you won't have run into any problems down the line. Okay, so with that said, oh, and also it's a good idea to replace your radiator cap with a factory made one. Okay, because uh, it's very important. All right, so yeah, with that said, this should wrap this. Uh, we're gonna wrap this up. So hope this video helps people out there. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more like it. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.